Camping like this is definitely not for beginners, but given the right experience and training, plus a certain amount of patience with the weather, it can open up great new possibilities to those who are keen on going to the hills. You should be an experienced hill walker, capable of map reading, fit enough to cope with walking conditions in any weather, and equipped with the right clothing and boots. The party just coming up are only out for the day, but they are ready for anything. They carry rucksacks with spare pullover, food and first aid. They also carry map and compass and know how to use them. Now let's go back and take a look at our mountain campers as they travel on their journey up to camp. No use carrying packs like these without plenty of training beforehand. This tent is correctly strapped above the rucksack and not below. And carry a heavy load with a pack frame. And this frameless rucksack has all the weight as high as possible. The pace at which you climb with these heavy loads will not be fast, though it should be steady. You must allow for this in your timetable. This film does not set out to tell you why people camp high in the mountains. This is something you must answer. But having decided to go and having chosen your mountain, the next job is to choose the actual campsite. The ideal mountain campsite depends very much on the weather. This sort of place, right at the very top, can be good if you can stand the winds, and they are likely to be far stronger than anything you experience in the valleys. A sheltered looking hollow like this looks inviting from a distance, but it will probably be very wet. A grassy slope too is not much good for sleeping on. In the end, they felt that this shelf a little way below the crest seemed a good compromise, and they were quite close to some water. Before putting up any tents, remove any boulders on your site, as you can't move them once the tents are up. It's a good thing to have a sewn-in ground sheet. This will help keep out winds and make tent erection easier. Also, your weight on the ground sheet may help to stop the tent blowing away. Notice that the ground sheet is anchored down before any attempt is made to put up the sides. This is most important in high winds when a tent can be badly torn or blown away at this stage. It's best for everyone to help on this job so at the time the tent is unstable is kept down to a minimum. Pegs should be eased into the ground rather than hammered. The main guy lines are long for greater stability and should be held down like this. It is important to make sure there are plenty of heavy boulders on the flaps. This is far better done now rather than the middle of the night when the wind gets up. The tents shown so far in this film are medium-priced mountain tents. They are suitable for most summer conditions in the British hills. Here now is a more expensive tent which is even more weatherproof. Instead of an outside fly sheet, a second layer is provided inside the main structure. Insulation is supplied by the blanket of still air which is trapped between the two layers. Guys are reduced to a minimum, and in fact the whole tent can, if necessary, be anchored down using only four points. Now contrast these two designs with these. Here is an attempt to keep off the bad weather with a normal fly sheet. Even a calm day can very quickly turn into a gale like this when you are in the hills. And here is a stern warning to those who take conventional tents. The walls act as pockets for the wind, and a night in either of these tents could end in disaster. In mountain camping there can be no campfires, and you must of course rely on a stove. The most economical kind is a paraffin pressure stove, but do practice using one beforehand. In a pressure stove, paraffin is forced up the central column where it is heated sufficiently to vaporize. The central column can be heated with methylated spirit or with these dry blocks of meter fuel. Check that the pressure release valve is not yet closed, and check that the burner is being heated. Drafts must be avoided at all costs. A screen like this will help. 
When the fuel is almost burnt out, close the valve and start pumping. If all is well, do not hesitate to pump the pressure up high. Whoops, that's not right. The paraffin is not vaporizing properly. Don't panic, but immediately undo the pressure release valve. This accident was not due to overpumping. You cannot overpump a primus, but because drafts had cooled down the central column. When this happens, start again from scratch. Butane gas stoves are less bother, simpler to work, but cost more. See, no preheating or flare-ups, but don't forget to take plenty of refills. And remember, these stoves do not heat food nearly so quickly. For safety's sake, tie back all loose flaps and put all stoves on slabs of rock. If meals are to run well, the cook should organize himself so that he has the sole use of one tent and has everything close at hand before he starts. Skill at living and cooking in a small space is so important that you must practice beforehand. Several weeks earlier, the campers met to test their equipment and to learn how to cook the special dehydrated foods. These foods are chosen for mountain camping as they are easy to prepare and are very light. Over several days camp, there will be a huge saving of weight by using dehydrated foods. Take this extreme case to show what we mean by dehydrated. This cabbage weighs four pounds, and this is the equivalent, just five ounces. The rest is water, and there's plenty of that in the hills already. Remember, therefore, that you'll be wasting energy if you carry up foods that contain a lot of water. Bachelors, under different trade names, make a variety of dehydrated foods. These compressed Horlicks foods make excellent emergency rations. They will keep a long time, are very strongly packed, and are highly nutritious. And this tin of marvel is nearly the same as all these bottles of milk. The commonest dehydrated food is potato. This powder will make enough mashed potato for four people. If you make it exactly the way the instructions tell you, you can't tell the difference between this and mashed potato made the usual way. As the powder goes in, keep on stirring to prevent lumps. And a little butter at the end really adds flavor. Soups and meats should be chosen according to their weight. Those on the left are too heavy to carry, so go for the dehydrated or concentrated foods on the right. Also, most of them are packed in lighter containers. The same goes for drinks. The ones on the left are mainly water, so take those on the right. It is much better to make them up on the spot. You can take your meat in a pre-cooked form, and then there will be no need to waste time and fuel heating it. You should get all the warmth you want from the other items on the menu. Remember to check the length of time these foods take to prepare. Some need longer to soak than others. In the mountain camp, they can now begin to harvest some of the fruits of their training. Fine cooking, but not such fine weather. The cooks have retreated just inside, taking every precaution with the stoves. One cook remains in the cooking tent. Everyone else collects next door. This may seem cramped, but it's very cozy. The secret is not to fidget about and to get something comfortable to sit on. And don't lean on the walls if it's raining. Now that you are no longer active, it is vital to see that you do not lose any body heat unnecessarily. Wrap up well using your sleeping bags. This is the moment when mountain campers feel they are one up on all the day trippers who have to trudge back to the valley before they can have their tea. As soon as the stove is free, the next course should be put on to heat. It is important when camping high to make a real banquet out of the evening meal. It is the main meal of the day, and if you have climbed hard, you deserve it. Furthermore, you never know what the night has in store for you. The temptation amongst boys to live squalidly in camp is always a strong one, and never more so than in the mountains. You can always hope that the rain might wash the plates clean, but in practice it rarely does, 
and the prospect of scraping the plates before breakfast is not a pleasant one. Be strong-minded and wash up properly. We'll let you off the drying up. It's a good thing to dispose of rubbish as you go along. Dig a hole and burn all you can. The rest should be discreetly buried. No litter of any kind should of course be left lying around. That trowel, by the way, has another useful job to do. Hygiene should never be neglected, even on a mountain top. Before turning in for the night, make sure the tents are ready for the worst possible conditions. First check all poles and pegs for security. Then make sure the tent sides are not going to flap and chafe against these rocks. Inside, all kit should be neatly stowed and you should know where to find all important items in an emergency. In particular, make sure that you have handy your torch and some spare guy line. Lastly, take a great deal of trouble to make a really comfortable bed. Put plenty of padding under you to soften the ground and to help keep out the cold. Try to use the best quality sleeping bag you can afford. The lighter and looser the filling, the warmer you'll be. Note that compared with the valley, it will be at least 5 degrees Fahrenheit colder for every thousand feet of ascent, and the winds may well make it even colder. And while you are asleep, you don't need to dream of adventure. You're having it right now.